continuing to go in depth tonight. Tonight is indeed about Utah and Florida, but really is also a game about Maui. At the end of the first quarter, a very special ceremony on the field honoring a former Utah football player, Kavika Casco, his family, and more who have been through so much in Maui after multiple fires changed lives forever. I'm actually stationed in the same district as Lahaina, um, same battalion, but I'm stationed on the other side of the mountain range. Former University of Utah football player Kavika Casco is a Maui firefighter. August 8th is a day he'll never forget. As we came around the island to where Lahaina is, we could see the heavy plume of smoke. The fire quickly began consuming homes and buildings. Casco and his crew started working initial attack on a structure when they were told to evacuate a neighborhood. They too tried to get out, but every direction was gridlocked. The only option we had at the time was find a safe space to shelter in place. From trying to save homes, now just trying to stay alive. It got to a point where it was just so hot in our cab, in our, in our fire apparatus that you know, the windshield started bubbling. My steering wheel was off gassing. And so we actually had to get out, get out of our apparatus and kind of she seek shelter on the downwind side of the apparatus. Running low on air, they determined their best option was to stay put. One of his fellow firefighters had become disoriented and became unconscious with the fire encroaching. Another firefighter pulled up in a police SUV. We didn't know at the time, but he made it out and came back in for us. Pulled up in a police SUV, opened it up. We all got in, we carried um, the unconscious person or the unconscious firefighter that was with us. We got him to the SUV and we eventually made our way out. This is the engine Kavika was driving that day, completely burnt out to the core. He continued to work for the next few days, helping to pull people out of the fire area. The fire moved so fast. Too many people, you know, too many people were lost and, you know, at times as a first responder, you wish you could do more, you know, to save people, but it's, uh, it's difficult when you know there's people in there that you grew up with, their family members loved ones. Kavika's brother also remembers that day vividly. He was coming back from checking on his father who had to evacuate from a different fire. And as he was heading home in Lahaina, that's when he saw the smoke. We got our important documents, passports, all that stuff. Um, some snacks for the kids, some water and uh, one bag of clothes and our dog and both of our cars. And we, when we were the lucky ones, we got out that was considered early. Driving through black smoke amid the chaos. And on the way out of our neighborhood, um, we saw our house catch on fire. We could see it through the smoke. The smoke kind of moved and we saw the flames coming above where our house is located. Despite losing their home and most of their belongings, Kainoa considers his family fortunate. All of our extended family safe. You know, many families can't, can't say the same. We lost a bunch of houses, a um, bunch of places to stay, a bunch, bunch of people got displaced, but we're safe and we count ourselves blessed. Now weeks after the fire claimed the lives of more than 100 people with hundreds still missing. It's going to be a long healing process for us. Kavika would later shake the hand of President Joe Biden. You can see him here in line that day when the president toward some of the damage in Maui, Casco in uniform, next to his fellow firefighters who endured so much and witnessed the destruction of the homes of families who span generations on the island. So the question here is, why are they here and how can you help? Kavika's here with his brother, with family members, a part of the Sape Foundation. We've told you about the Sape Foundation on our website, KUTV.com. Also a connection to the University of Utah and the football program, Sape and his wife, are putting this together to try and rally around the families in Maui that need it the most. I had the opportunity to speak with coach Ron McBride, who coached the University of Utah football program from 1990 to 2002. Kavika was on his team. And Kavika Casco played for me at, at Utah. I was a starter safety for us. 
he was the first fireman on the scene. And uh, his brother's here whose house got burnt down. How special is it to see him here today? Oh, it's so good, you know. And the Sape Foundation helped get him out here. And obviously my, my foundation, we support those, the people of Maui. And, and, uh, and I have a lot of close friends over there because we, we recruited over there for probably 25 years or longer, you know. So, so it, it was uh, devastating to everybody. And so happy to have them here and be alive. And, uh, and you know, they're very, you have to realize that th that population is very resilient. It's exciting to be back, but more importantly, it's to help spread the awareness that, you know, people need help, you know, in, in Lahaina and just to get the help to the people that need it. To help out the Sape Foundation, you can find a link in this article on our website, KUTV.com. They're going to try to help as many families as they can on the uh, island of Maui. And just a remarkable story there. Former Utah football player, firefighter, engine gets burned out, yep. is lucky to be alive. Unfortunately, there's the connection with so many who were a lost in that fire or lost so much from those fires. Yeah. Heartbreaking. But it is. Yeah.